that you say that because we live in a world today that is so focused on small things. In fact, they make, they make Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 24 so, so relevant. Uh, hey, Doc, come on in. Come on in, we just started. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34, Jesus tells the disciples not to worry about such things as where they're going to live, what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, where they're going to sleep. You know, you can't, can't, can't turn one hair on your head. Gray. Gray. You can't add a cubit to just that. that, that that's yeah. right. And, and so I look at that today and I see many of us are falling victim to the very thing Jesus told us not to stress about. Because we are, we are so spoiled and so inundated with having our desires instantly gratified that when we cannot get them gratified, we think the world has come to an end. In other words, if mo most, most of these young folks, like my daughter and them, in the microwave don't work, they don't think there's nothing to eat in the house. Because my, my six-year-old thinks everything, just put it in the microwave, Dad, put it in for a couple, in fact, in fact, what she tried to tell me now is, you ain't got to put it in minutes, Dad, just put it in, took this category and push a number for the weight, and it'll do it. And I was like, you know, there was a time where, you know, we would actually cook the food on the stove, and she was to me like, Mm -hmm. But we live in, in that way and we spend our time worrying about things that are inconsequential when the truth is God has told us specifically. Don't worry about that. Don't be like Gentiles. In other words, don't be like non-believers. Non-believers worry about such things as what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat. But he said for you, worry about the God, the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things. And so it's funny we're joking about that. The first world issues being to watch TV on your cell phone and whatnot. First world issues. But, but the truth is these first world issues are leading to us worrying and stressing over things that Jesus has specifically told us not to worry about. And, 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 I, and I think it's imperative upon us as the church to always be mindful of that reality and be mindful of what's going on so that we can redirect people back to what God has told us word to, 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 to focus on. I mean, I think we worry about a whole lot of stuff we don't need to worry about. I you think, and I see too, I think that's why the Mennonites and other mm -hmm. clans separate themselves from the world like they do. Now, it, it, of course, it's overboard a little bit. Right. But I think that's one of the main reasons that they do that. that and, and, I, and I would, I would agree with you. I think that that can really kind of threaten your lifespan. Right. right. In, in fact, not only that, but it threatens your witness. Who are you witnessing to if you separated from everyone? Mm -hmm. Jesus requires us to take our witness to the world so that those persons in the world could have the joy and the peace that we have. In fact, I think Brother Rose and I were talking about this last week. That when Jesus says, Jesus says, the, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you have life and life more abundantly. You know, and there's another scripture that says about the fruits of the Spirit. And many times, we're looking for something tangible. We're so used to getting something tangible, giving something tangible, that we think that God has to give us a thing, a product, when a piece that surpasses all understanding is more valuable than anything else you could ever get. You know, knowing that you have the presence of God with you, no matter where you go, is more valuable than anything you can get. Have, having, being confident in who you are. You, that one, you know you are a child of God. And because you're a child of the king, that makes you royalty. And the king is not going to leave any of his children behind. All right? So that gives you the confidence that you can go through life and you can deal with some things and, and address some things and not have to worry about some hangups hang you up because they don't apply to you. But the problem is we're so busy not teaching this. We're so busy teaching that, girl, if you want that man, you go lay your hands on him and say, in the name of Jesus, name it, claim it. Walk up to someone like, Brother brother Rose got a nice little truck. I mean, I look at it all the time, eh? We're so busy teaching, walk up to Brother Rose's truck, lay hands on his truck, say, in the name of Jesus, it's going to be mine, not realizing we committed a felony at that point. We, we, we committed a crime by, by, by touching his truck 
and take and claiming possession of you. You've committed robbery. You've committed grand auto robbery at that grand auto larceny at that point. Because what you do, you're saying that it doesn't belong to him; it belongs to me. And we forget that that's not what God is about. We teach this whole. It makes me so mad. We teach this gospel. This is why I, I like him, but I, I I really wish he would go to school. It's Joel Osteen. He's so busy teaching every day is a happy day, a luck go lucky day, that he ain't preaching that Bible because that Bible is full of stories of tragedy, suffering, and loss. And, they, and, and what he's missing is he, he is not even really uncovering the full power of God because if he did, he would see a God is able to perform in the middle of the storm. To see a God that's able to show up in the middle of a battle and give his people victory. But he's so busy wanting to have a picnic and everything be good and nice and whatnot that he's missing the power. He ain't, he ain't covered 80% of the Bible yet because he doesn't want to preach that, those sermons. He wants to preach that, that our God's a good God, our God's a wonderful God, and our God doesn't let any trouble happen. Oh, I'm about to cuss. Ooh. Brother, Brother Rose will get some alcohol. I'm about to cuss. He's <laughs> to clean my mouth out. That's some BS. Go ahead, brother. You want to say hey, something? And you know what? Uh, on the way over here, this is where the Lord led me to. And you can put me back around. He led me to the 12th chapter of Romans. Okay. I'm turning to it now. And, and this is what we need to read. You are 100% right. Therefore, there's no condemnation, condemnation to those who are. Look. Who are in, in, in new creature in Christ. New creature. And now I want to catch that word no condemnation. None. 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 He emphasized the word none. That's right. And so but this is the part here that, that caught my attention and concur what he's talking about here right now. <laughs> Beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and suffering unto God, which is your reasonable service. But here's the kicker right here now, women. Here's the kicker. And be ye not, not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You yes. know what this right now, you know what? This movement should be full of the church. Season. That's right. Go is that right now? It should be full of all members right now. That's right. Because here's the whole thing, what you're talking about right here. Being not conform. I'm looking at the word, what the word conform means. That's right. And the word conform means being like everybody else. That's right. This stuff is real. Some message you were saying, you know, and he's telling the truth uh, about this is stuff I taught all last week. And some are listening, but many are not listening. It's all about the fact that true riches of God. That's right. It's not money. That's right. That's what the word is so food. But true riches of God is wisdom. Peace. Knowledge, peace, and understanding. The nine fruit of the spirit. Yeah. And practicing the fruit of the spirit. You are. I, I talked about this this past Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I want to dominate the sub, the, 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 the media. But this is all I've been talking about. True riches is first of all is wisdom. That's right. And have you noticed how the weather patterns are going crazy? Yeah. And particularly here in the United States. Yeah. All these. Tornado. I mean, yes. tornadoes. Yes. People are just being expelled from their home. And the Bible talks about how um, the, the earth is going to throw vomit, um, vomit us out. Yes. Because of the sin of the world. Yes. That's in the New Testament. Yes. I don't know where I could find it, but I don't know where it is. I think about that all the time about going back to these uh, these storms and things. That's right. Mm -hmm. We had a bit more pain on telling why these storms occur. Only no. thing we're talking about is going to some relief. That's some right. Relief is not the thing. It's it's acknowledging who God is. Preventive measure is the key. Preventive measure. That's, that's this right. This is the whole thing. That's I hear right. That. See, He's giving us warning. That's and right. And what the world is be saying now is, wait a minute. God. How safe. can we stop these storms from coming? Jesus told you. People they were gonna come. But mm -hmm. well, our concern should be now, how do we as human beings stop these storm? You, you, you know, you know what's interesting is uh, you would think that all this stuff happening, someone would say, Do we need to go pick up the Bible and make sure we're not doing something wrong? That's right. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting? All this stuff is happening and everyone is trying to come up with every explanation other than what God is willing. In other words, we're going to come up. There's some more waking up, but <laughs> well, they're, 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 it's, they're, not, it's not on the 6 o'clock noon. But, no, but, no, but, 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 but here's the problem. In this day and age, mm -hmm. 
we don't, you don't have to have, there used to be a time if you wanted a Bible, mm -hmm. you had to go buy one of these things, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You had to go spend $30, 40 to get mm -hmm. one of mm these. -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you want a Bible, mm -hmm. all you have to do is go to the app store and tap on the free, not even the paid one, the free app. This app I use right here has concordances on it. It has lexicons on it. You ain't got to pay for nothing. It's free. And the thing is, in this day and age where we have the information literally, literally at our fingertips, where all it takes is to push a button here or there, and then we have access to the word, we, we go and look for everything else. We're looking for a geological explanation. We're looking for an astronomical explanation. We're looking for a meteorological explanation. And here's the thing. They can't answer these questions any more than to say it happened. They can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Because here's the thing. How do you notice? I've seen this with, give you an example. I have now recently, my, my, we, my wife and I took pictures with the family on a Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now, the weather was that it was going to rain Wednesday, begin Wednesday night, Thursday, all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. It wasn't going to stop till Sunday around 6, okay? Mm -hmm. So we, uh, if that was Mother's Day, it was Mother's Day. And so here's the thing. It did not rain Wednesday night, it did not rain Thursday night, Thursday, it did not rain Friday, it did not rain Saturday. You know when it started raining? Mm -hmm. 15 minutes after our pictures were over. And I kept telling us, we ain't gonna be able to do those pictures because it's gonna rain. It did not start raining 15 minutes after we went to take those pictures on a Sunday afternoon. And, 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 and I said to myself, I said, see God, that's my fault for relying on, on the weatherman because the weatherman is making what we call an educated guess. Mm -hmm. He ain't he's certain about it. In fact, that, that's why he gives you a percentage. Yeah. Because he's saying he's going to... It's happened six days out of ten. Right. So, so, years or right, right. Years. so he's giving yeah. you a percentage. So he's saying up to that percentage, he's pretty certain up to that percentage. But once you go above, beyond that, he doesn't know. And the, and the problem was, he, none of us know that. None of us are turning to God saying, God, what it is that you want me to get out of this? What it is you want me to see? Do you want me to return? Have I messed up? Have I gone away from you? Have I turned people away from you? We ain't doing none of that. In fact, you know what we doing? We sit here saying, Mr. Pedro Dean, can you give us money to fix it? And I, I don't have a problem with us asking the government to help re re fix what was damaged. But here's the thing. I believe what is being damaged is only a, is only an example of what's been damaged internally in our spirits. If, if, if that, remember when the prophets used to, when, when, when God used to make the prophets live out, uh, to, to live out their, uh, their uh, whatever was going on? Mm -hmm. I think that's what God said. Go ahead, Brother Rose, you want to say something? But you know, and I meant to correct this guy on this this past Saturday when we were studying. I don't want to think this stuff, but he was talking about this thing. He, a lot of people believe in prophecies, that, but we don't need a prophet anymore. We got to worship the God. That that's God right. Made. We don't need no prophecies now. Right. The whole thing in the says, this is what it says. Renewing of your mind that you may prove, prove what, what it is. He that's right. Like, prove what it is. Good. That's and right. And acceptable. Okay, I'm sorry. And acceptable and the perfect will of God. That's right. Let me go so far and say that I'm going back to what you talking about that weather for uh, weather podcast Monday. I said home Monday. It was so hot Monday. Yes, it was. And I had been contemplating of going uh, up to street there, uh, water my problem. And uh, I was sitting there just aggravated about going, water my problem, going, water my problem. But in the meantime, while I was being aggravated by, uh, you got to worry, I mean, you got to know, you got to wonder, you got to recognize the fact that something is on your mind. Yes. It's God trying to tell you something, it's the enemy trying to tell you something. Right. Keep now you won't know it unless you in the word of God. That's right. And so what happened with this, I sat there one day and contemplated, contemplated, and all of a sudden, I asked God, said, Lord, send us some rain. Now the clear sky was just as clear as it can be, and the hot as it can be too. Mm -hmm. And once I asked the Lord to send us some rain, I took it off my mind. And guess what happened? It rained. Day. It rained. Now, let me, let me finish saying this. This is the good part about it. If I had to go over there and water and file earlier in the morning when I wanted to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this is what you got to do, man. It's a blessing when you delay. Right. By my not going over there and watering that flower, those flowers that morning, you know a lady came by late on that afternoon. 
Yeah. And she in turn asked me, she said, you grant these laws and I thought yes, no, I did. Then she told me about, this is one thing we're learning something else behind my waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. You never do your occupations when you're tired. That's right. You wait till your body is rested. Mm -hmm. Then you can get your duties performed. All you do is like you, like you have the energy to do it. So when you're tired, you don't have to go out there and try to perform no duties because it's not the right time for you to do it. This lady told me about how she preserves her water mm -hmm. when she is, uh, when her body, when she's not, she's stored in jars and all. And so when she is tired, rather than running over the water hole, she can take the jars when she has a surplus in and water her, her flower immediately. And everything did, it doesn't take any effort. Right. I was learning about this. Now. She made a reservoir. See, she made a reservoir. You are exactly right. See, see, but if I hadn't gone when I wanted to go, I would have missed that teaching from that lady. God blesses us in so many ways. In, in fact, let me, let, me, let, me, let me take it a step further. If you had watered the plants and you wanted water, all they would have got was water. Yes. That's all they would have got water. Yes. But because you waited for God, as the rain is falling from the sky, it's pulling nitrogen, no, oxygen, yes. and whatnot. And so when the water hits the ground, it's not just H2O. It's no. H2O with some nitrogen in it, yes. with some nitrates, yes. with some oxygen in it, yes. with some carbon in it. Yes. So what happened, though, not only did they get water, mm -hmm. they got fertilized. Yes. And so and, and you, and anyone who spent any time in the garden knows, you just, just watering is not enough. You need to give fertilization yes. to bring out the best of your plants. Yes. And so if you had gone to water that morning, yes. you would have saturated the ground so much that when the rain fell, it would have run off and run away. Yes. It would not have stayed right there yes. and soaked into the ground. Yes. And so, uh, you know, it, it just goes back to this whole thing about us uh, and, and use it as a metaphor to say, you know, if you're not going to seek God, if you're not going to pursue him, if you're not going to every day you see God, give me more of you. Mm -hmm. And say, like, like what Jacob said, I'm not leaving God. I'm not letting you, you go until you bless me. Then you, we don't even realize what we're missing out on because we don't even know that we need what we're missing out on. Yes. Don't even know it. Don't even know it. Uh, Go ahead, sister. You were going to say something. No, I'm, I'm just listening. Let's go back to that text because you weren't here this past Sunday. We had a wonderful service this past Sunday. Amen. Wonderful service. Amen. And he brought out some things that was so powerful. God is telling us one thing. Stop asking God for something when you hadn't utilized that what he's already given to you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying about this, God. Right. See, we, we are, because this is what the Lord is saying this. When we are not utilizing what he has already given us, whether we large or small, we are saying, first of all, God's not in control. That's right. And we don't trust him. That's right. This is what, you notice one other thing, I will say this, not to overtake me, but I will say this now. <laughs> we out here trying to save ourselves. It's death up to God to save us. <laughs> and here's the thing. He has. He already done it. He has, you that, are that, exactly that, right. That was the purpose of the cross. You are exactly right. I tell him when we're talking, this has got to be preached more and more and more and more. But you know what, though? What's that, bro? The religious world, you no, know, the spiritual world is looking for one thing, though. All the salvation is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not of you. That's right. We couldn't save ourselves if we tried. We couldn't say if we even tried to, if we spent the whole new turn and turn, we could never uh, save ourselves. That's Going right. back to what you were saying about, about uh, who I'll call minister's name. Right. He knows one thing and all. The people don't know who God is, the care less who God is. The only thing they want to do is what God said he came to promise us. That's right. What he's going to give us. What he's going to give us. And yet he has already given us eternal life and we won't even receive it. That's right. The best thing we could ever have. He is giving us everything we'll ever need. No. And the only thing we have to say is, I receive, excuse me, and I believe the Lord, and you just to save until he comes back to this earth. That's right. That's Thank right. you. I appreciate it. Amen. Yes. In fact, I'm glad you said that. That's what I was thinking, that you were talking, that not only do we not know and not trust him, but when we don't use what he's given us, we're not appreciative. No, because I think about my mama. My mama used to say, I ain't giving y'all nothing else because y'all ain't, ain't used what I gave you. 
That's you know, right. you left all, y'all, I ain't get no more box of cereal because you left half the box in there. Now That's you right. ask for another one. I ain't getting this. And the problem as children, and, and again, it was just an instance of how spoiled we were, that we could not get to the end of the box. We were already thinking about a new box of cereal as we're eating the new box of cereal. Yeah. In other words, we couldn't get down to the, to the last scoop of cereal and then say, hey, mom, we can ready to eat the last of the cereal. Today when you go out, can you get we open a box talking about, Mom, you know you ought to get this cereal. And in her mind, she's like, why in the world would I get that cereal? You ain't ate this box yet. And in and, and, and the many times, here's the thing, I believe that God has, in fact, I'm going to use this analogy. My wife does not read the manual for her car, okay? Whenever mm -hmm. something goes wrong, she says, hey, show me how to do this. So I got mad at her one day. Mm -hmm. She said, well, that's, that's, she said, you're being impatient, so I'm not being impatient. You haven't taken the time to learn your car. And she said, why? She said, why did I been doing? I said, because if I was God, I wouldn't give you another one. That's right. Because you ain't showing me you appreciate you this appreciate one. one yeah. you, don't, you don't know what this one can do. And, and, and I said, here's the thing. I said, you got advanced degrees. You can read. All you gotta do and, and, and the, the those car books, and they, they should make cooking books that straightforward. Those car books are so straightforward. They tell you what page is on. They explain to you. Then they say, if you don't understand, go to this page. We have a further explanation. If they can make cooking books like this, everyone can cook and whatnot. But what? what but when we don't look, I tell us, but when you don't go to that book and look, and yet you come to me and want me to figure out everything for you, what you're saying to God is you don't appreciate it enough to take the time to do it. I said, what if I, what if something happened to me? You can't keep coming and asking. But I say all that to say, using an analogy, that God has brought us and has blessed us with so many wonderful things that we think, one, he was supposed to do it, two, if he didn't do it, he ain't a good God, and three, we act like we ain't got to really use what he gave us. In other words, we take two sips of the water, then we go, okay, God, I want a little bottle of water. No, drink that bottle of water. You take advantage of that. Take, you know, like, like you said, take advantage of that. Here it is, God has called you to do something. Well, you've only done it for two days talking about God, I'm ready for yeah, something new. Right. work. Right. You know, we talked about this a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, maybe a little bit long, about the fact this and all. And he took this out of that same text of Jesus Christian. Don't come to church expecting to teach the preacher to give you your blessing. Hello. Stop that. I Don't right. get mad at the preacher because your life circumstances not changing. Get mad at God. That's right. And I'm free about this now. And, and, and that's yourself. He'll that's let right. you know exactly why, the, why the, the prayer is not with it. He'll let you know exactly why the word of God is not with it. Don't right. get mad at him. Right. Get mad at yourself. Get, I like you know, I like you to get a little further. Get mad at God. That's go, right. go and confront him and ask him why is he not with it. That's now. right. That's right. Because one, one thing we said in a time when God had to say is many of us aren't bold enough to ask God. That's right. And what we don't understand is God can handle your questions. You know, because like when I was brought up, my grandma said, don't you question God. That, that, that's, that's, that, that's prideful and arrogant. And I got up, as I got up, I realized it's not the question. No, it's, it's not the questioning that, that is private area. It's the mindset you bring with the question. That's right. Because it's one thing if you don't understand what's going on and you're asking God. Mm -hmm. It's another thing when you think you know more than God and That's you're right. trying to take God to task right. for what he's doing. That's God right. has no problem if you don't understand something saying, God, I don't understand this. That's right. and in fact, Sister Hattie mentioned there's a book she has that someone gave her uh, where it basically said, God, I'm sit down. I'm mad. In other words, the person is, is, is talking about how they had to go through understanding that they could come to God and say, God, I don't like this. That's right. This thing hurts. This thing That's is right. painful. And this is not what I planned for me. That's Can you right. explain to me why you let this happen? Because I need to know. My faith is on the line. I need to know. That's right. You know, and God has no problem with that. That's the right. problem is when we show up saying, God, how dare you? You summon a bum and a boom. Let uh -huh. me tell you something. Don't you ever do that, God. And God said, like, excuse me? He will say it in this book, come and let us reason together. That's he right. He created us to be intelligent. Yes. He wants us to question him. You that's are right. exactly right. That, that's, how, that's how you grow. That's, that's right. That's how you grow. Yeah. That's how you grow. That's right. That, but when we, have, when, when we have discussions, if you are listening to me and you are not asking questions while I'm talking. You ain't paying attention to what I'm saying. Because is, <laughs> you are exactly right. Let me go somewhere and say, this is true. Oh, yes. Because guess what? God is doing one thing. First of all, we got to realize one thing. He is our father. 
And yes. He's, and he's in charge. Yes. And he's in, yes. Large and in charge. Yes. 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 I, uh, I mean, you know, it becomes so much easier now. First of all, what we need to do is just to go to God after you have read his word. Yes. Not when you are sitting right here, uh, you are guessing. Right. Are you man, are, man, the answer's right there in the word. I'm thinking right now, you know why I come out here? Because of one thing. We have to renew our mind because mm -hmm. when we were born in sin, we ain't know nothing about the spiritual realm. Absolutely nothing. Well, I'll tell you this, if I can say something for a moment. <laughs> I, when we were at the uh, funeral home, mm -hmm. I, I was, they asked me to teach the youth class. Mm -hmm. uh, While well, I was teaching the youth class, I asked my students, if I can show it to you in the Bible, would you believe it? Mm -hmm. No, they said no. No, well, they wouldn't. I quit. I said, <laughs> I said, I'm wasting my time. I mean, they don't even have the veracity of God's mm -hmm. word. Yes. They don't even consider it to be God's the word. word of God. Yes, right. It, it, important be, or irrelevant. Because my, 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 my mama and right. daddy don't show that the word, the veracity of the word, it, it, it works. That's my, right. My, my, my yeah. daddy, That's right. They don't hear mommy and daddy saying, thank you God for blessing me, God. They don't hear, they don't right. hear mama praying and hear daddy speaking about the Lord. That there used right. to be a time when you would hear us speak about the things of God. Yes. They don't hear it. So guess what? Because they don't hear it in their mind, they say it must not be important. It, it must not what? And because then my parents not even practicing. There and it the is. The book of Deuteronomy, I think it's the sixth or the seventh chapter, talks about talk about the Lord when you rise or when you that's go right. down to your children. That's right. It goes it, all it, through it, this it, whole it, chapter. It, 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 Deuteronomy six says. Write, write it down, write it on your door it doors, yes. write it on the post of your gate, yes. write it on your heart. When That's you right. rise, when you fall, speak to your children, That's speak right. to your elders. That's In fact, right. the, the commandment is to always keep God's word In before you. In front of your eyes. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Go ahead, Doc. The Lord is teaching me also. Mm -hmm. uh, when a child go to church get all her life, then when they go to college, they hear a professor say this, but he doesn't jump the same way. Now, listen to the dog. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, that professor is exactly right. He has, he has understood to a far greater degree. Mm -hmm. Y'all listen to the closer, mm -hmm. Because that's one thing. Until we realize this, dog. Truly, the Old Testament is God's word, is God's right. But the New Testament tells us a different story about what Jesus did since he came. This stuff is real. Yes, you cannot believe what that professor did. He has a greater understanding. The same word with a greater understanding. Therefore, now y'all got to follow me. You got to stay with me. I know you're not. That's, what, that's what, this is why I study so much. I study so much because of one thing. He didn't tell you the same thing in Romans about what Paul is talking about. You know what I talk about in the Sunday School of Sunday. And this is what I talk about. For the sake of the word, for the building of the church and everything else. This is what uh uh this is what the eleventh chapter of Romans tells us the same thing when we studied it past week. Okay. Paul was talking about one thing though. Paul was going into Rome now. Yeah, right. Rome was a city of, of slavery. Rome was a city of debauchery. Debauchery. It was a city Lust. of blood. It was. all of these different things. You are exactly right. This is what Paul was going through. This city, you know, but he was telling the, telling the Romans about this one thing in particular. You know. Now that we are in Christ Jesus, we are new creatures. We are new creatures. Hallelujah! Behold, this the old is passed away. The old is passed and the new. new. Yeah! And this is what I'm doing just found from the teachers who were sitting in here. For the sake of the gospel, let's cut out all of this dispute and tension. That's and stop. You don't have to. Your word you don't have to be right. You're sitting there being. You don't have right. to be the only one who knows the word of God. No, but for the sake of the church. That's right. For the sake of the church. Uh -huh. Let's cut out all this this fussing and all that and this and so your point be right. Ah, oh, you're doing it at the gospel. Right. What's right. God's point? What's God's point? What's God? That, that's what. The, that's the whole purpose. Yes. What's God's point? Yeah. And, you know, in fact, this why I, this why I, 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 I this why I, I get mad when I see some ministers who believe that the only one in the church that can bring the word of God is them. Amen. Because 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 here's the thing, the word already says God will raise up stones. Yes. To cry out for Him if necessary. Yes. 
what 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 we what we meant what we miss here is that the uh, the onus or the emphasis is not on who it is that is delivering the word. The emphasis is on who it is that the word is talking about. But who is what is he saying? Right. The emphasis is on God. Yes. I, I heard it this way. I heard this word. Mm -hmm. Every statement in the word of God is truly stated. Mm -hmm. But every statement in the word of God is not a statement of truth. Truth. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. It, but, yes. but it's not Job did say, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, God has done this, caused me this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. But that's true to say that, mm -hmm. but it's not a statement of truth. It's God true. may not have caused all these things that happen to Job. That's right. But you have to determine who God is talking to. Yes. Lord. And right. why is he saying that? And when is he saying it? Yeah. May I say this to you? Go ahead. You don't hear me jumping in the church. Take her point over. Go ahead. You don't hear me jumping in the church, dog. You listen. And he just saw a preacher. You know, it was this past Sunday. I wasn't saying nothing. Right. Until you hear the sudden point. That's right. In, in, uh, in Genesis. Because of one thing. See, when I jump up to church, I say, Amen. Another person look at, my, look at me and say, oh, they, That boy, that's crazy. But they hadn't been freed from what I've been freed from. Oh, there it That's is. That's different right there. I'm saying amen hey, because I know what the Lord done for me. He ain't done nothing possible for you. And so you can't say hey, amen. You know, you, you know what that is? That's the parable Jesus gave about the two guys that had debt. The yes. one had a great debt and yes. the rest yes. yes. And he said, yes. he, he said, he said, which one do you think had more reason to praise God? And yes. the, in the the person answered the one who had the greater debt. That's right. When you have, when you realize just how much God has freed Set you me from. And, 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 and brought you from out under, then you you have a greater praise yes. than you do for someone who thinks God was supposed to do it and then, or they, they didn't do it or God or the only thing they think of God is because God let them go on some expensive vacation. When, when, when your life has been slid, slid by, controlled by strongholds, when your life has been controlled by, in fact, this is why uh, the, the woman couldn't stop kissing Jesus' feet. Man. Be, because, because what, because when, 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 you, when yeah. you realize just how much Jesus has set her free from, 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 you know, in fact, they, 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 they worried about the oil. Uh -uh. They're like, you know, this could be sold and, and give it away. And Jesus and like, no, as, as expensive as that oil was, yeah. then her life was more expensive because it caught, it, it, because they don't realize it's going to cost Jesus' blood for her life. And but she realizes it before the prayer. That's what we have to get. We got to get the point where we realize the value of Jesus before Jesus pays the price. Let me say this over, Trisha. Simon was the one question about this all. That's right. Because old Simon probably had been married the night before. And been in the business with her. Right, 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 right. And he said, if he, if that man knew, knew who, she who she was, was then he would be right And here's yeah. the thing. The yeah. word no mm -hmm. in the Bible means sense. Yes. Anytime you hear the word no, yes. between human characters, yes. it means sense. Because of my interactions, yes. because of not my knowledge of her. Yeah. Well, the, uh, I tell you, this book, this transition of Bible used to get on my nerves. But as I pull up one and begin to read it more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the amplified Bible. I said, by the end of the sentence, I have forgotten what what word I'm trying to research. Right. Because, because it, it gives it, all it, the it, meanings it, of it, the it, it does. The amplified Bible. You ain't got to go through that thing. You got to study it. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. 
You see me with this dictionary right here in this cell phone, you know. Mm -hmm. I can sit up here and take Sunday's lesson. Uh -huh. You're not going to take me to study Sunday's lesson. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, did you hear me? That's why people don't study the Bible. Right. You got to have a dictionary. You got to have a deposit. You got to have a let, 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 let me make you laugh. In my personal study, my personal time of study, mm -hmm. I say, you know what? I'm going to go, God, I'm going to study a book that I have not read to a skin and turn. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is the beginning of Job is good preaching stuff. Mm -hmm. The end of Job is good mm -hmm. preaching stuff. We don't ever deal with the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite aware of what happens. And I have a general idea because I've heard other people preach it. But I need to read it for myself. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. So I, I pick up Job. And for, for the last couple weeks I've been reading Job, you know I'm not out of the first five verses yet. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd be in the middle of the book by now. I'm still in the first five oh, verses of Job. Uh, and, 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 and I'm saying that because there is so much in his word that you cannot pick it up in 15 minutes and think you're ready to teach it or preach it. You That's cannot. That's May good. I say something about you? When I come in here, not necessarily me, and uh, I want you to start a when you study, when you really study the lesson, you will come in here and uh, you will be so anxious to expound on that what you have studied, what the Holy Spirit has taught you. But I'm going to tell you something, and I learned this a, a long time ago. Somebody be sitting in here and all, and he hadn't studied nothing. Right. And the majority of the group would be in here who hadn't studied anything also. Mm -hmm. And they will come together and they will take up the whole lesson. <laughs> on an opinion. On an opinion. <laughs> you are exactly right and hadn't studied not one thing. Not, not, not but you know what thing. I have to war against? I'll sit in here and all. I have to beg the Holy Spirit to give me a chance to say something. <laughs> oh, I'm in favor here. I know. See, they're coming here. They had, they I hear, I hear them all the way in my office. Well, I tell you, you say you haven't read the book of Job. I changed my schedule at work mm -hmm. uh, to go into work from 3 p.m. to 11.30 and 12. Mm -hmm. Because when I get home, when I get off at 11.30 and 12, I couldn't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I would stay up to 3, 4, and 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. so people say, God, you have such a recall of the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's because I've been studying it. For, for many, many years, mm -hmm. and now I'm getting away mm -hmm. from what I was studying. Mm -hmm. But God said, okay, I'm taking you down another path. Mm -hmm. but it's important that you don't miss things. Sometimes, too, in my situation, God is teaching me how to think. Mm -hmm. Amen. How to think yes. and how to, um, what do you call the word? Yeah, not just a Meditate. Lie. Meditate. That's the word she's out there. You, yeah, how to think, how to meditate, how to understand yes. other things other than the word. That's right. Now, now it, you, you know, there are other things I'm interested in too. Mm -hmm. And I put, I wasn't interested in a year ago. I got you. But he said, you know what? Uh -huh. You weren't ready for this a year ago. You were exactly That's right. right. You cannot. Oh, excuse me, because I don't want to take all the sudden, no. No, I've been there three or four times, more than three or four, I mean, and at one sitting. But now the, the little kid bits in there and there. You but know, I have been through the Word at least three times, just amen. checking it off every night, going amen. through it. Staying three, four, and five in the morning, and still couldn't go to sleep. And the things he would tell me and the things that I tell him, ooh, I wouldn't tell anybody because... That thing I'm crazy. May I Just say like to you? you? May, may I say to you? Crazy. May I say to you? Okay. Plenty of time, the Lord don't even want you to touch this book. Period. Leave it alone. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to you. are exactly right. right. Never know supposed to take it up. One thing, God is going to make sure that you don't stand before Him one day and tell Him what you did. Or what you don't know. Or what you don't know. Everything that you need to know, everything that you need to hear, God will make sure that you get it before you come before Him again. That's right. Because God is responsible for our salvation. Amen. Amen. That's, That's a scary thought, that. too, isn't it? No, because guess what the whole thing is? Mm -hmm. See, the whole thing is total surrender yes. to Him. Yes. I'm going to see Jesus. You know how I know I'm going to see Him? I know. Tell me. Because of what I mean. He didn't bring me this for OJ, you know what I'm saying? That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. too, but He didn't bring this for to leave me. That's right. And I'm telling you something. When He set me free, from alcohol. Let me ask y'all one thing. <laughs> why y'all think I come out here every Sunday, every Saturday, I'm in church just every Why? Because one thing, 
He set me free from the power of alcohol. Right. The power of gambling. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Are y'all really listening to this? Yeah. And what what made it? He didn't do it when I actually he did it his own time. Right. That's right. Well, I'll tell you this. Everybody has a story. If they're a Christian, it's both of them. Oh, you don't have a story. Everybody yeah. has a story. Yeah. And I, I too have been set free from some from a number of things, I but I still need to be set free from some other Don't things. worry about it, because I'm going to get one thing wrong. Now, what I didn't mean in that thing. Let me go some more thing. Everything that you need, he's going to do that. Yeah. Are, are you going to be an animal case of You can't hurt me, God. Oh, tell me. You can't hurt me, God. Not at all. At this stage in my life, no. When I was 25, I was supposed to be have been married mm -hmm. with 2.5 children. I know that. A split level on the dog. I know that. I'm past 60. Hold it. And I ain't got none of that. <laughs> none of it. Let me tell you what. Let me say this to you. See, you was in love with some man. You were really I in love was. with him. Yeah. I, I, I can read you and I can tell you this, bro. I look at somebody else in this church, you know, and this, this person here is not you in this case. But this person is really mad at God. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm not, I didn't say you now. Listen, I'm, I'm thankful. Yeah, let me finish I'm thankful it didn't go through, but go ahead. Let me finish this up. And this person here has got everything in the life that she wants. Mm -hmm. Except that man. Mm -hmm. I can look at her and I can tell. She is mad at God. And so see what she's trying to do is to exchange her desire. Uh, got what we call, what they call, celibacy. Cel 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 yeah. Some people, God, don't want to be married. You know, I'm gonna tell you this is this night, this night, y'all can look at me. Yeah, Paul talks about that. Oh, I'm saying that. Yes, First Corinthians is the seventh chapter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. I look at my daughter. I look at my son. Mm -hmm. And neither one of those are married. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is what I say, you And I look at other girls in here, and uh, other men in here, and sometimes marriage just like easy, like falling off a log. Mm -hmm. But in my children's case, in their life. It's the hardest thing that they need to they don't try to come. That's what they really want. They, they want to be married. They want to be married. And, and I tell my daughter, I said, uh, uh, with your attitude you have, it's best that you never marry nobody. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I know you're serious. I know why you're saying it. Because one thing on uh, this, uh, she, if she, uh, if she were to marry somebody, she can outthink the average man. And that wouldn't be nothing but misery in their house. Because see the whole I'm sitting with it. She can out think a man so fast in the head swing. And here's a look at me. I ain't never had no man to be married either. Right. Because I'm gonna tell you what, I sit there and look at myself right now. I want everything to go my way. I know how to do everything. Hey, look at what I say no. I don't bet more need no woman around me and man and more. She handles me. If you really want to know the truth, mm -hmm. but I but all is also teaching me how to learn how to share or to or to not to look at myself as being perfectly right. always right and this and look at your background, look at the history of what you came from in life and everything and all. And I think about you a lot of times because of the fact that you came from a musical background, you came from a professional family, and I never even met your family. I don't think I met you, your mother. And but I see perfection in y'all. I see you over there that you can do it from the average, but, but God can use you and your talent in a much greater degree than a marriage. My mother used to kind of intimate that to me, but I tell you this, it was the best thing in the world. I would have messed up somebody's life if I ever married them. I truly would have. Oh, amen. I tell you, it, like you said, I don't care what. What you try to accomplish in life, if you don't do it through God, <laughs> it's the wrong way to go. You are exactly right. It's the wrong way. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And people ask me, why don't you marry? Why don't you uh -uh. have been married? Uh -uh. I said, well, you know what? God hasn't blessed me that way yet. But I'm so out on And I have been in love. But I'm so glad that I you did that. Because I never would have loved God. And my, you are exactly right. I had loved a man. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. And I had married a man. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Now, I've loved a man yes. that way. But I never would have loved Love God, God like that. Right. If I had if, married if, a man. The, the man would have been your God with a little G. You, you are exactly right. right. Yeah, that's right. In fact, like you weren't here, and I shared this. Uh, I was engaged once to someone. Okay. And she became became my God with a little G. Mm -hmm. And God had That's to. Dangerous. It's very dangerous. And God, God killed that relationship as fast as he could and, 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 and drove us thousands of miles away from each other because what he said, he said, Thou shall have no other God Amen. before me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it, I'm glad we're recognizing yes. these limitations about ourselves because yes. this is part of the being transformed by the renewing your mind. Because here's the thing, one of the things that we see through many of the characters in the Bible is they have to come to a point where they realize as great as they are, they're limited. They can only they only go but so far, and after that, God has to take over and do it because guess what? They are still human. I don't care what I don't care what any Jew says about King David. He was still a man, and he still his 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 legacy is still marred by the fact that he could not control that thing between his legs and mm -hmm. cause and cause a man a man to be killed because it. Samson, there ain't no one ever been as strong as Samson. But I, but I excuse me, I love the way God takes a subject and everything about it relates to another. Ecosystem, yeah. science, math, and yeah. I remember what you're talking about is causing me, you say God is limited. No, I say God is limited, man is limited. Man, I'm sorry, man is limited. I'm thinking about what you said and the word finite and infinite. Yeah, it's compassion. And I remember when I was in elementary school, yeah. and you learned about subsets and subsets yeah. and, and infin infinite yeah. or, um, mm -hmm. math and right. finite math. Yeah. Right. And, I, and so that's what God is teaching me too, how everything is related yeah. and he because he created it. That's right. He created us too. That's what I'm saying. Let me say you want that's that. That's what he wants to open your mind, your heart, and the Amen. world to you. Amen. The other thing to make you think, to make me think anyway. Can I say this to you right quick? Sure. The girl who I went with for about 15 years, mm -hmm. I told her I'd never marry you and would love her to death. She said, why? I called her. I said, because you're just like your mama. Her mother was never stable, never true to her dad in 777. Mm -hmm. This is when I met my wife, I hated all women because mm -hmm. I had been jilted. Right. Now, I'm a very popular person, but I had been jilted by this one girl in particular. Are y'all mm -hmm. listening to me right now? Mm -hmm. But guess what, though? So when I married my wife, I was about as much in love with my wife as I am with this book, and I ain't never seen before. Right. But I made myself marry her because I didn't want to marry nobody who I really loved. Oh. Because I knew that if I married somebody who I would have loved and they wasn't true to me, I'd probably wind up in prison. Wow. But if I married somebody who I didn't love and they wasn't true to me, who wasn't giving this to me? I'm for real about that. Mm -hmm. And if, up until this same point right now, uh, now God will always give you what you really need right. rather than what you want. Right. Amen. 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 And so, now, because that's God. Because He's the only one that really knows our heart for which the others don't know. Right. So, by the same time, this showed up. I have been, now that same girl who I've been married, she dead now, and I saw how insane she was before she died. Right. I used to look at her and I said to myself, wonder what did I see in you? Right. And I'm pain. God loves his chest. You know what I mean? I'm talking about us who will inherit eternal life. Are you listening? You're going to heaven. Don't get me wrong. But guess what? You're going to go because God saw you in heaven. Not because of what you try to do in your own life. Oh, in, 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 fact, I know. in fact, let, let me jump in on this finite and infinite mm -hmm. uh, conversation that, that we are now in. Mm -hmm. um, I think the problem why, uh, the problem is that many of us can only see in the finite. Mm -hmm. We can't even wrap our minds around the infinite. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when, when you say, because we're so used to a beginning, Middle and the end. end. Yes. And it, that, that's the car, compartmentalization that we put everything in. Yes. Every relationship we've had had a beginning, yes. middle, end. Yes. Every job we had had a beginning, yes. middle, end. Yes. Our lives have a birth, uh -huh. the time we grow up, uh -huh. dead, uh -huh. beginning, middle, end. Mm -hmm. And then when we have to talk about a God mm -hmm. who is so much infinitely greater than what we are, then we have a problem. Yes. Because like, 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 for example, we were talking about it this past Sunday about the Alpha and Omega. Because mm -hmm. we were singing the song, You mm -hmm. are Alpha mm -hmm. and Omega. Mm -hmm. I hate it for it. Hey, man, we can, sing, <laughs> hey, hey, we, we, we can sing it again. I love that song. Mm -hmm. But but the, the problem, I don't think we fully grasp that because we have no problem seeing God as a beginner. Mm -mm. 
but we can't fathom what the end will look like. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, for many of us, many of us stress out, spend more money because we're trying to find someone who can divine the end mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's why we go to the go to the psychics because That's we right. can't wait for the end to come. We're looking for the end. That's right. And, and, and so what happens? What we have to do, if such as we're going to understand God, yeah. we have to move away from our finite understanding and move to a very infinite type of thinking here. Yes. So in, in, in science, as you're talking about science, in science, the closest relation to that would be quantum physics. Mm -hmm. Because in, 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 in quantum physics, mm -hmm. it says that at any given moment, there are an infinite number of variables for that moment. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, coming here to, okay. co coming here to church today, mm -hmm. in one reality, I got up late. Mm -hmm. And I missed Bible study. Mm -hmm. In another reality, I got here, mm -hmm. the building was burned out. Mm -hmm. In another reality, I had an accident. In another reality, I got called and had to go to court. Mm -hmm. In another reality, I wasn't even here in town. I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. There are infinite possibilities mm -hmm. of what it could be. And that's exactly how we have to see God. God is infinitely more mm -hmm. than our understanding. We can know. This is why this is why Mary said, Mary asked a question, is it possible? And Gabriel has said, there's nothing too wonderful or too impossible for God. Mm -hmm. Because what he's saying to Mary, and he says it to Abraham too. Mm -hmm. Because Abraham and Sarah, depending on which chapter you read, one says one says other thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm old. I, you know, I'm, I'm shooting cat water. I can't produce mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. He's old. He, mm -hmm. he does his sperm as a swimming. Mm -hmm. And the angel has said, is there anything too hard for God? Mm -hmm. what, there's, what, what Gabriel is saying in both instances, you got to move beyond a uh, beginning, middle, and end. You got to limitation. move. You, limitation. You got to move beyond the limitations. You got to move to a point where anything is possible. Oh. oh. And, if, and as long as you can think anything is possible, yeah, you can then, do. Then anything can happen. Uh, uh, and I, and he ain't talking about God. He's talking about you and me. Let me tell you one thing. We limit ourselves to possibility because I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, we don't know how to begin, how to be settled in the middle, and how to seek through the impossibility. Now. Right. You know, I always ask God, What's that? Lord, take me where you are in infinity. You know what you told me? You can go, but you got to go with your eyes closed. Let me tell you one thing. We are so much greater than what we think we are. Are you moving it? Oh, yeah. The, 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 the word, the word. The book of Psalms, G-O-D-S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that ain't no little thing. No! No, 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 no it's not. It, it, say, it says it also in Genesis when they built the Tower of the Babel. Mm -hmm. Because guess what God oh, said? They can do anything they imagine. That's when God to, stopped them. That's yeah. right. God, God said, I've got to stop this. I'm going to tell you what you did. You had somebody in your family that you was trying to idolize and you what you did with this stuff, and don't you think about this, and, and don't run, don't run, don't, 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 first of all, don't ever do one thing. Stop limiting yourself. Stop it. Well, I, 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 I know I'm not does. omnipresent. I'm not um, uh, uh, omniscient. No, mm -hmm. uh, uh, omnipotent. Omnipotent. Um, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not all those army, and that kind of. That that makes me feel humble. That's a humility. It, have you ever found yourself doing something? Huh? Have you ever found yourself doing something that you thought it was impossible you do, and all of a sudden it happened? Yeah, but not because of me. I I, I I I I agree. God God takes me to places, allow me to experience things and do things that I've never have been here done by myself. However, on the same token, I do think that the old, that. The sky is not the limit. The, uh, the, the, the limit is not the sky. The sky is the limit. That's right. And if, if I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. Because when you say the, the limit is the sky, then you can only go as high as what you think the sky is. That's right. But when you say sky is the limit, then that means as far as you can go, as far as your mind can wrap around. And here's the thing. Many of many of the people throughout history that we have, we have tabbed with the word great, and I don't like that because... Whatever is great today becomes not great tomorrow. Something becomes right. Right greater. All right. I That's remember. Right. I remember when Dr. J was playing, and, and we were talking. That's the greatest basketball player to ever be. He mm -hmm. retired. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. Oh, he got Michael Jordan. And I remember Michael Jordan talk. What is the NBA gonna do now? They can't uh -huh. sell tickets. Uh -huh. It came LeBron uh -huh. James. LeBron uh -huh. James get retired. We uh -huh. can ready to see something else. There's always somebody tagged great. But what I'm want to say about that is those people that we do tag great is because. Mm -hmm. They didn't see 
they weren't well, they didn't allow themselves to be ruled by their limitations. They allowed, they allowed themselves to be governed by their creativity. And when and, and as long as they could think it in their mind, they could do it. They could do it. They could find a way to do it. And and, and I and I think that I think that when we go back, Amen, praise God. When we go back a couple of lessons, the Genesis one we says we're gonna make man in our image, male, female, in the image of God's made. That's the that's what he's that's how he's making us. This ability to see it and then to make it happen. But this is gonna sound crazy. But I think man, mm -hmm. the human male mm -hmm. is more limited than the female. This may sound crazy, but I think I really do because he created man first. He gave him the instructions first, and then he created Eve. Woman. And then he he trained Eve mm -hmm. in so many you're, you're, you're in a different Can creation I say story. You know. Before you go, okay. you're in a different creation story. I disagree. But we'll get to that point. Let me tell you something about a woman. Yes, she was created for it. We understood to be a man, all man's help me. Yeah. But a woman can do things a man could never even possibly even think about that. I know that until I saw a man bring a child into this world in the paper. He was married to a man, and they put that the, baby the, 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 inside the, 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 him. That's what they were talking I about. I never thought I lived to see a man birth a child. Let me tell you A woman has a uniqueness that comes from God. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you what that. Thank God that you are a woman. Thank God for this. Because of one thing. A woman has that nourishing power. A woman has that creative power. A woman has that in her that a man could never have. And, 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 by, and, the man, and man has things that a woman could never have. That's right. Right. And right. in fact, that, that's why we're made together. Yes. Right? We're, we're, we're made so that we complement one another. What one lacks, yes. the other has. Yes. What the other has, doesn't have, the other put. Like, like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's unusual that that women are more emotional than men, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's so unusual that men are more plan or process oriented than emotional. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? For a man to reach his fullest potential, he needs to feel some things. Yes, and I think it's through his interaction with his wife mm -hmm. or a woman mm -hmm. that will happen. He experiences that. You, you see this all the time. The brothers say, "I'm so glad that Susan married John." She has brought out the best of him. No, she didn't bring out the best of him. She brought out his feelings. And his feelings completing him. And but then you have Susan's friend talk about, I'm so glad she married John. Because Susan was just a mess. She was over here. He brought order to her life. And and, and, and it's not by accident it happens. It's perfect. It's it, 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 perfect. Let me tell you what I saw this past Sunday in church. I'm just going to tell you what I saw in church in the past Okay. And first of all, I'm going to say this, John. Not dominating the, uh, the audience. I've been separating my wife for three years, not separated, but she stays in her mother's house, and then I stay in the home. I see so many wonderful things my wife has done since I've been there by myself. Amen. I don't have to admit it. <laughs> my wife is so creative, and she does things by impulse, uh, not even perfectly trying to do them, then it just comes out of her. So, and I, question, does that make you love her? Yes, in a, in a oh, certain so way. Yeah, you do yeah. that. But I don't want, I, I don't want, and you know why, why I don't want to admit love? Why? I'm ashamed of love. Why? Did you hear me? Because you were rejected. Uh, and and rejected. Man, you are a exactly male right. and female have, there's something about rejection. Yes. That can totally destroy a person. Yeah, if they're allowed to. If you let it. Let me say this though, I gotta finish something before I quit it up. Uh -huh. I saw your wife in church this past Sunday. Uh huh. And I saw how she became your help me yes. in your electron, electronic devices and things. Yes. I saw that because guess what? I thought about the people who used to run the PA systems and this that up. He was trying to run them and all, but Lord, but his his, his responsibility his duties hindered him from doing it. But guess who was performing all those duties that need to be done? That's right. Big wife was. See, I'm saying I don't be sitting there watching. Okay, I've never seen that. Yeah. I don't be sitting up in church. Or watching things, just I thank God right. for the ingenuity that He has given me. Amen. I saw how much He was so far to tell her that uh, if you in turn keep functioning the way you did, then she gonna fry me some chicken and make one out of I don't think you are. I don't think you are. And you exactly right. See, you had such a powerful platform before you. 
and your brother and your sisters and your daddy and also your mother. With their talent, with their presentation to John Q. Public. I saw all that. And but she, our nieces and nephews have gone far beyond. This past weekend, the reason I was out of town was because my baby niece finished college. Mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. three of my children, sons, you were talking about creativity. Mm -hmm. All three of my brother's children quit college. All three of my brother's children, their mother chose that college for them. Mm -hmm. All three of them have finished. Mm -hmm. One of them's getting, um, they're, they're wonderful children. All of my nieces and nephews have gone beyond what my parents did. But the best generation, I think, so far is that um, our, our parents' generation. They took the little bit they had mm -hmm. and did the most with it. They educated themselves. They educated us. They made influences. You had a mother-in-law who came and relocated so she can help load, so she can help raise her grandchildren. Right. That is phenomenal. Right. Uh, I think our is. parents' generation is great. But like I said, but my nieces and nephews are standing on our shoulders, so and, and they have done school-wise. It, it, it's 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 been phenomenal. You hit the nail on the head about one thing, and I'll tell you this story one day, I ain't gonna take a bit, I don't know each of these. Amen. You no, know, rejection is a power. It, 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 and I'm gonna tell you what happens in the rejection. It's not because I did it's it's a it's a it's a pattern that goes mm -hmm. down through the generation. But Satan is in charge of it all. Yeah. Did you hear me talk anything? Mm -hmm. You are, I'm gonna say this, but I'm ready to eat now. I have all of them watch you. And uh, one thing, every time I look at you, I think about them 50 pianos in your mother, was in your mother's mother. mother. Well, I'm sure you're just so. Well, it, it was 22, but well, how many were in your mother's mother? Well, 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 it's all right. I'm going to move one in my house so I can practice. All right, let me say this to you, honey. Go ahead. I'm sorry. See, you come out of First Baptist. And your dad was such a notable figure in First Baptist. I never had the opportunity to meet your father. But he was not perfect. None of us are. That's what you got to keep in mind from now on. That's the close of our statement right here today. No human <laughs> being is perfect. Yes, yeah. right. Now listen to me, look at me when I say this, because today I want you to be here today free. Did you hear me talking? You oh, know if I'm free. Let me say to you, I'm free. Let me say to you, sweetheart. Okay. I'm you sorry. notice I have always limited my conversation with you. I always have, for a reason. No, I watch how you embraced when I saw you at the chicken place. Yeah, but but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> See, you were so highly talented. Please listen to me. And first of all, I want you to be here today saying one thing yourself. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'm listening. God loves you so much. He does, I know. And you are so acceptable, not only here, but in his kingdom and eternal life. And Amen. one day he's gonna really prove this to you. Don't let nobody take away your joy. I talked about this today about the, uh, excuse me, the uh, true riches of God. Mm -hmm. The true riches of God is wisdom. The nine fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit. You practice the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Let me tell you one thing. I'll see if I just shot. I do the same thing, even though I make so many errors and so many mistakes. I'm going to tell you what's been uh, troubling me this past for the last couple of weeks about Satan will put people in your life. That nothing you could ever do would satisfy you. That's right. You could never be right. right. They, they reject you to a high. They do all these things. They always find so many harsh things to say about you. You could never be uh, uh, successful in their eyesight. But yet, this is what we go back to when I'm finishing up the conversation now. Go right back to Romans, the uh, 12th shot. Mm -hmm. Church shot. And let this man. That's in Christ. Be in Christ. Who was in Christ? Who thought it not robbery? Yeah. Philippians said it. Four chapter yeah. eleven. Who thought it yeah. not robbery? To be equal with to be God. Equal with God. Let me tell you what I say. Many people go to church and many people do all the work in religious circles, this that, that, but they don't really understand what that means. That's right. You can have a mind of Christ. Who is a phenomenal? Thought though. Let me tell you what that it is. Beyond Jesus. Sometimes. But Jesus tells one thing. Great thing have I did. But great, great things, things shall you do, do because I go to my house. I go to my father. Let me tell you one thing. You hadn't even begun to. I watch this how you intertwine with the pastors here and all in your selection of music. I've been watching all this stuff. I ain't sit out here for yourself to sit, sit up there to entertain nobody. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting as a watchman on the wall. And one man, like I told him uh, the other Sunday, is that God chose each one of y'all in the big. 
I was over to Ricky Woods church yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, one guy was sitting beside me, uh, Ricky gets up there, he said, he won't preach no long sermon in the field. I said, no, because he got good sense. He said, uh, one thing about it, he can't put nobody in heaven. <laughs> your, own, your own life right. stands for edge of whether you, but your own life doesn't, doesn't, it may imply, but it doesn't certify where you're going to spend eternity. That's right. But you know, I appreciate everything, you, the positive things you said about me. I truly do. One day I'm going to tell you what I think about you, mm-hmm. but only when God tells you. Yes. Hey, hey, Amen. Let me, let, me, let, me break, let me break in because I want to deal with two things because I'm going to have a last word. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Um, first of all, I'm glad you observed that because I was wondering who all paid attention to what Nicole did because um, Sunday... Um, my normal people weren't here that do the audio visual. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, no one went to pick up Roddy and Kristen, so that precluded them being here. Uh, Brother Charlton and Deacon River weren't here, so the three of them are my primary, and then Kristen does it too. She's She st- has stepped up for her husband and, and knows how to do it too. That's why on the, the corner board, we have a schedule out here for everyone, what everyone's doing, and she's on there too. So. Uh, having seen that during Spring Revival, because that happened in Spring Revival, I had to do everything. She came over to help me, and you were right. Uh, that she that was what it was called being a help me, and I and I was hoping people would see that. And I did make the the, the, the joke that she keep this up. She is gonna have to get the bit piece of chicken because she's helping me tremendously by doing that. And and I and I hope folks saw that, not simply as a husband and wife stepping up to help one another, but when there's a need in the church, Amen. the requirement of all of us stepping up to do it, because this is what she said, she had never done it before. After doing it, she said, this is easy. I'm sitting here thinking there's something complicated that you got to, because she's thinking it's like at the TV station where you got all the, t- I said, you got two buttons. She said, yeah, just hit the down and pause, down and pause, down and pause, down and pause. I said, that's it. And so, I hope you and I'm glad you saw that and I praise God that you saw it. Now my Amen. prayer my prayer is Amen. answered. Amen. Also rejection. Um, rejection is very powerful. It is so powerful that it doesn't matter if you're a kid or adult or a senior citizen, even babies understand rejection. Um, uh, my two year old will sit sit he when we're watching TV that he'll start going around the corner. If I don't get up fast enough, he'll like, yeah, yeah. Because he thinks I'm not coming to help him or whatever, he thinks he's being rejected. Mm-hmm. And he'll sit at the top of the stairwell, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I don't get there, Wah! and then I'm like, what's wrong? And you'll see him, he put his arms out, Wah! he wants to be held, he wants to be, he feels he's going to be rejected. God, rejection is so effective a tool, that I'm going to end it with this, because we'll talk about this next week that there are times when God will use rejection itself to get you to desire Him. That's right. That, oh, yeah. that, 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 he, that He will make it look like He, 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 he turns back on you. And the and first thing it makes you do is run to Him because in our human psyche, we cannot handle rejection at all. And so I, I, I wanted us to, 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 to think about that. And, well, I'll, and I'll give you some examples of that next week when it looks like God is turning away. God mm-hmm. is being uh, mm-hmm. uh, In fact, those times, many of us think God silences rejection. Mm-hmm. When it, it's not necessarily he's rejecting you, mm-hmm. you may be at a point where he wants to see what you're going to do. Can you be trusted? Can you handle this? Can you, right. can you deal with this? Mm-hmm. You know, because he's been helping you up. And not that he's not going to help you. But at some point, he wants to know. This is what I tell folks. Maturity, real maturity, is when God doesn't need to hold your hand through everything. When here's the thing, you can say to God, God, I'm good. You don't have to worry about me. I, I, I'm, I'm handling this one. You go on and help someone else. You know. Uh, how many times does it tell us in the Bible to be courageous? Can I say something about his rejection in the relationship to you? When I was driving up in the parking lot, not for the first time, mm-hmm. but I was thinking, I hope that you don't get discouraged because of the number of people who don't come to Bible study. I said, now you know what? He, um, I don't want him to cut it out, but I'm thinking on another turn. Maybe he should just stop the afternoon Bible study on Wednesday and just do the evening. I'm saying, But on the other hand, I was saying, 
But he has to do what God is telling him to do. Hey, amen. He has and, to do what God is telling him so, to do. So, amen. So, thank you, God, for letting me bring my own personal example of that. When I first started in ministry, that was an issue. If I looked out when I was preaching, and I didn't think there was many people, as I thought it should be sitting in those seats, <laughs> I got upset. When I would have Bible study or, or, or teach Sunday school, and especially if I look across the hall, and my counterpart didn't have enough chairs in his room, then I got maybe four or five people. And so one day God said, excuse my language, he said, what the hell are you thinking? He said, don't you remember my word says that heaven rejoices over one mm -hmm. sinner being saved, being reclaimed. He said, if you're worried about numbers, bring it back to Matthew 6, God, please. Bring it back to Matthew. He said, but you're not worried about the kingdom. He's, he, and what it says, it says one can put a thousand fight, two can put two thousand, mm -hmm. ten thousand. That's an indication that it's not the number that signifies the power, it's the God in the number that signifies That's the key. power. All right? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, and so, I went, I, and so I got very embarrassed, mm -hmm. privately embarrassed, mm -hmm. all right? Because this is what God has said to me. This is what I was thinking, and I was saying, and I'm sure you're fret, brother, so you think you were saying stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, but it's, so I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking all this. And so one day, I'm driving, because I usually have, have my greatest epiphanies when I'm driving. Uh, I'm driving, and God said, what if in your ministry only one person is saved throughout the entire time of your ministry? That moment he said, that don't mean you won't preach to other people, but only one person is saved. By this point, I got it. I said, I'm rejoicing with the angels. Because the word says, one, one is, he said, okay, and don't you ever worry about it. And so this, and then I said, all right, God, and I'll make you an agreement. Mm -hmm. Bring as many as you want to. But if you bring me just one, I'll preach and teach the one like I got a, a million. And who was a minister of Farius? Was he here? He, he was. Uh, he, I, 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 I'll deal with that in a second. I'll deal oh, with that in a second. Oh, but, he, 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 Brother Rose will get the last word no matter what. Hey, I'm teasing you. I'm going to tell you this, my See, you're looking at one, but God is looking at the entire generation. Yes, he is. And, 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 and so who got Paul? Young Cho saved. That's right. How many people did they get saved? One. one. But how many people did all Young Cho get? They get credit for all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 in fact, here's another thing. You see, we're looking at what's going on here. Do you know this morning on Inspirational Wednesday, someone came on and said, I praise God for Pastor Al because he is so busy doing things that it looks like no one's attending. He said, but I'm watching. Reverend Evans, that came. Mm -hmm. We were talking. I said, you know, I went about this Bible study. And blah, blah, blah. He said, Doc, but I watch it. He said, I watch you on Bible study. He said, I watch you during my lunch hour on Bible study. I had a frat brother who watches faithfully. Noon and seven o'clock. He got a pastor. He attends his Bible study, but he watches us faithfully. People, and like I had to tell the rest of the thinking boy, you were there at that meeting. I said, there was a day I got off of here. It says 75 people have been watching us. I could not fathom 75 people in here. And so it so what so what so it's like what you say. We have to get beyond what it looks like and worry about what we see because God is using this. We don't know how many people are gonna watch this after we turn this off, because they can play it back. I'm gonna tell y'all something there. Mm -hmm. And if you notice uh these uh, popular TV ministers. They coming in, they're coming, they're going, they come and they're going, they're coming and they're going. We're here with that. God has to be going. That's right. That's God right. Is. And don't and, and here and here's the thing, love, don't worry. It's the day, trust me, I keep telling y'all to trust me on this. Mm -hmm. The day gonna come, that's gonna be the least of your word. The day is gonna come when we're gonna have to figure out hey, who, 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 who can help me. Because guess what? I can't teach everyone. Nor am I gonna try to teach everyone. I ain't gonna be, you know, I have some of these preachers that have 10 campuses and killing themselves on Sunday because they're trying to preach all 10 campuses. No. I pray if God give me 10 campuses, he brings up 10 sons and daughters that can take each one, take a campus. Same thing the most. But, uh, <clears throat> but here's the thing we got here, man. Is that, uh, and I told this guy, I don't know the name he is, why it is. There's such nice with the couple with her, but thank her. That's Sean and Carol. Yeah, I'm so impressed with him. But he and I 
uh, we are listed as seven. And one soon in Venice is going to be able to expose the population of the church. Okay. So they hadn't heard him. Uh, one thing, get this in mind. Uh, God sent him out here for the clientele type of people that are here. See, y'all are highly qualified people. But, but you can't look over yourself. You don't, it may not be book, but spirit is the greatest knowledge. Oh, that's so this is true too. You know, Amen. I'm here for a reason. Amen. But, uh, but here's the thing. No, Al is really preparing himself. And that's why God sent him out here. Uh, because you have some highly intelligent people here. And he's brilliant. Oh, I know that, but I'm going to tell you something I thought about too. Uh, I thought about Sister uh, Remy. Uh, Glory. 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 Dedicated. Yes, yes, she is. Now, I'm serious. Yes, I want to see it all. Like, y'all women, see, they couldn't stand here unless God had what they promised. That's right. I'm That's serious. Right. Right. Amen. She's so interested in this, this <laughs> picture in Kate. And I'm just saying that one day, then I'm ready to go. Amen. I am too. Uh, look you know, at me. Look at me telling like, like I'm the one who wants to I'm the one who But you know, the couple that came in here and all, and they were so old, five of the church and all, mm -hmm. before he came here, mm -hmm. they came faster. And it looked like that Gloria was having so much contention with this lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she did. But have you noticed that they are not here anymore? That's right. See, I'm going to tell y'all one thing. Whatever God has called together, it's, it's together. No, there can't no man destroy it. That's right. I'm saying, but God has put together that no man, man put the sun. They could never, in what he's saying, just now, put forth their effort to try to destroy the dark star. That's right. Put them That's right. See, it's difficult. Man doesn't see it. And it's go back to the beginning, mm -hmm. in the middle, and the end. And the end. Mm -hmm. God has already saw success right here in First Fellowship. Amen. I looked at that yesterday, I was on the first baptism. I looked at Rick, uh, uh, congregation is, you know, and, and the old people are dying out. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the, who were taking their place. See, y'all, don't get so upset with me, you know. Keep this one thing in mind, and I'm ready to go when I say this. Now. God doesn't, uh, he what we worry about God taking the breath with him, but that shouldn't be our concern about that. It's God reinforcing the breath what he took out. Replacement, yeah, replenishment, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I think about David and his little ragtag army mm -hmm. that he put together. Mm -hmm. But look how he became king of the, all of Israel. Yes. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And she just said, man, our sister said about old David. David had 500 men with him. Didn't know, they didn't know nothing about God, but just because they were with David. David. They, they I want you to read Isaiah 22, 22. Okay. It, it, well, it's in the New Testament, and it refers back to Isaiah 22, 22, mm -hmm. about David mm -hmm. and how in the last days God is going to resurrect his temple. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, find it, I'll find the New Testament mm -hmm. version because I want you to read that. Okay. Because that's what I think about when I think about music and how it relates to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I listen to secular music. I, I do too. I, I listen to I do too. And it strikes a chord within me. Yeah. I, I started playing it on the channel, and I play it on the channel better than I do. I understand. I amen. understand. Amen, amen. Now, because Brother Rose is hungry, <laughs> we go, we go, we go, come around here so we can pray. We go, we go, we go, we go pray. Brother Rose, get, get her hand. Amen. Oh, God, taking you to lunch with us sometimes. Amen. 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 You, you, you asked about Mr. Ferris. In two and a half weeks, he lost, I shared his son, he lost his two aunts and an uncle. That's why you haven't seen him. Oh, okay. And he's been dealing with it. But he's supposed to come to Bible study tonight because we got a meeting after Bible study tonight. So, but he, oh. uh, he I've got him on schedule to do some things, including preach this month. So, okay. so, 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 oh, but yeah. then just keep lifting him up in prayer. Okay. I, I, I tell you, he wrestles with feeling worthy. Uh -huh. Many of us do. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look back over your life and you see all the time when God should have let you go and let you be on and God kept you. So he's feeling, he's dealing with some issue of worthiness, but we're going to, we're, God's going to work that thing out. And yes, so, but, but, and so I want us to be in prayer for him. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for Sister Carol. You know, she's the one you said had the, with the breathing apparatus mm -hmm. on her nose, and a couple mm -hmm. other persons in the church mm -hmm. who are up against some challenges, and you can see it in their spirit. They haven't that said, but you can see in their spirit, mm -hmm. they're asking, "Can God handle this too?" Mm -hmm. And I keep telling, them, I say, "Y'all got the right pastor. I'm full enough to believe. Not only he handle, he'll cure, mm -hmm. and whatnot, do a work of miracle out right in your presence." Me out. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. So I let, appreciate that about her. Amen. So let's be in prayer for them as we close out in prayer so we can go get something to eat. And mm -hmm. Brother Rose, mm -hmm. can we build up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you today for God loving us the way you have. Father God, you thought it not robbery to continue to allow the breath to the inner into our lungs and out of our lungs and into our lungs and out of our lungs. God, you made sure that the blood flowed pump coarsely and warmly through our bodies, God. God, you've given us a reasonable portion of sanity and health, God. And all you ask for us in return is to declare your word, to declare your righteousness, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory you so richly deserve. Now, Father God, we pray at this moment, at this time, God, that you continue, God, to love on you. Continue, God, to bless us. You continue, God, to be with us. God, we want you to watch over Sister Carol and, 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 and Sister Candace and, and some other members, God, who are up against some challenges, some health challenges, where they are worried and concerned, God, that maybe this may be the one that you can't overcome. Let them know, God, that the angel Gabriel was not lying. When he said, there is nothing too wonderful for you, there's nothing that's impossible for the Lord, that if we just trust and believe, you will make it happen. Father God, I pray that you bless the houses of the hands I hold, God, that you bless them and they're rising and they're falling. God, I pray that you bless those people who thought it not robbery to join us today on, uh, on, on Facebook Live and Periscope Live and Facebook and, and YouTube Live. For, uh, for Bible study here today, and we pray, God, that you not only give them a blessing, but give them an understanding. Give them a, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Give them an undying, an unyielding, an unquenchable love for you, God, so that, God, you and they may grow together and we may see the kingdom of God right before our eyes. Father God, protect us, keep us, and never leave us. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name we do pray. Amen. 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 Let me turn.